bet they'll have to stop the fight! Just close! Ah! Yeah, and then epic shoulder flip. <laughs> Two episodes in a row where someone hit through someone. That was all recap, but I enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> it's kind of great. Like Bakugo and Deku are going through very similar things where they recognize something in the other. And I feel like Bakugo represents the common reaction to that, which is feeling threatened. And Deku represents the productive form of that, which is taking inspiration from it. No matter what their status right now, Deku's philosophy wins over time because he has the humility to keep growing. Bakugo, at least the way he is right now, I'm sure he'll he'll develop over time, but he is attached to like a solid image of himself as the best. But if you're already the best, then you're not, you're not growing. That is one of the biggest temptations of life that people just don't recover from. Like, I see this so often. You see people who just, they don't move on. You know, they don't move on because it's way more seductive for them to think that they're great. What's sort of sad about it is that other people can see through that for the most part. And so weirdly, it ends up lowering your, your status in a way. People will end up respecting someone like Deku, I think, long-term. Just my hunch, or maybe it's what I want to believe. I don't know. Someone who is low, but open and humble will surpass somebody who is high, but, but rigid and attached to like status or assumes a level of mastery that they have not yet reached, you know? But I do think there is some future potential world where they're perfect for each other. They're great because they each have things the other admires and, and probably needs. Backstory? And I grew up in yeah. So we've known each other since we were little kids. Come on! Let's fight bad guys! Yeah! He was precocious. All the other neighborhood kids followed him around. Yeah, he's a natural leader. He was always so confident after his quirk manifested. He started to change. When I was four years old, I learned that some kids have more power than others. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Episode seven, Deku versus Kachan. What made him change, I wonder? The more I watch, the more I'm, I'm interested in Bakugo. I mean, I don't want to condone his behavior or justify it, but just some things coming to mind so far are that Deku called him confident, but it may not actually be confidence. You know, just because someone is bold doesn't mean they're confident. In fact, a lot of the time, it means they have something to prove. And also, there's something about being a child prodigy that can be harmful or counterproductive. You know, even though this is counterintuitive, I think it's confusing for kids when they get praised too much, especially when they feel like they don't deserve it. I think good praising or good rewarding has to be connected to an actual achievement. And I don't know if this is true for Bakugo, just something I'm thinking about generally. A lot of what he has is something he was born with, right? So on some level, being praised for that feels weird. It's weird to be praised for things you didn't do. It's weird to succeed because of things you didn't do, if that makes sense. This is true for adults too. I mean, it's weird, but we think we want attention and we want praise, but I think there's a point at which it starts to feel empty. It starts to feel hollow. If the way the world is treating you doesn't match the way you view yourself, it creates conflict. Give me a status report. Where are you? Just shut up and defend the weapon. I've got more important things to worry about. He's sort of forgotten about the assignment. The heroes are clearly at a disadvantage here. A big one. Real pros have to outwit villains on a daily basis. <laughs> Good training. That's life. All together. <laughs> Damn, you really turned that around. <laughs> Thanks for explaining. Notebook number 10, page 18. Luckily, I got to see Eraserhead's moves in action. He's a fast learner. Not surprising. He's always been pretty good at taking action in crisis situations. Yeah, he's quick thinking. He improvises Plus, well, he and he's observant. Taking notes on right, heroes. right, yeah. Another thing about Deku is this probably means so much more to him. On the topic of earning things, he wasn't born with these gifts. He wasn't born with the gifts that Bakugo has. And I mean, some of it was luck, right? Like being in the right place, right time, meeting All Might. But he spent so much time dreaming of it. When he actually has a shot, he's going to make it count, and he's going to value it. I think about this a lot. You know, like I have all these goals and plans and things like that. I can imagine pretty clearly what it would feel like to just wake up one day and have everything I wanted. And... Not only does that not feel as good to think about as me striving and accomplishing things on my own, I actually feel like in many ways it would be a negative because it strips it of its meaning. It strips it of its narrative, of its story of myself taking on challenges and overcoming my weaknesses and doing great things, which is maybe worth more than some of those things I'm fantasizing about. So Deku is going to be on Bakugo's heels until something shifts. He's old and stagnant to Deku's young and hungry, and I think that's partly represented by this fight. Those lessons are in his blood now. That fanboy knowledge is paying off. <laughs> Had to drop the word fanboy in there. Damn it! You were tricking me for years by acting weak! Bet you've been laughing behind my back, huh? That seems like a bit of a stretch, but okay. That guy has some real anger issues. 
Kind of scary. Yeah, see, everyone's seeing it. I think that's accurate. I think it's transparent when you're trying to hold something up artificially like that. Bakugo's saving grace is that he actually is really talented. Like, he actually has a gift. Some people don't even have that, and they still try to, you know, keep themselves up there like that. Midoriya told me that young Bakugo thinks very highly of himself. But this level of pride is something else. It may end up being his demise. Yeah, it probably will be. And I don't think he thinks that highly of himself inside. I think he's trying really hard to think highly of himself, but it's not working. Good. He's completely forgotten about my partner. Just like I thought. If they wanted to send someone out to stop us here, it should have been Ida. He's way faster after all. And more more common collected. I have to trust Uraraka. She'll find the weapon and Ida, and then I'll join Very, her for a very heroic all around. That's how we'll win. <laughs> trust in your friends. Trust in your partner, the opposite of the villains. I just hope that Bakugo can learn from this experience, or these experiences. You really think they let someone like you in when they could have me? No, oh, wait! I'm not trying to compete against you! You gotta believe me! The irony is that he's gonna win. Wow, you're so awesome! Whatever, this is- More backstory. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Impressive? I bet you that's gonna grow into an amazing quirk. Definitely. I knew it! Flashy quirk for a future hero. It's perfect. No, see, this is bad. Bad. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> so I don't remember the exact context of this, but I have a friend who is good at training dogs. And I remember he told me once that one really easy way to make dogs depressed is to praise them for no reason, which always stuck with me. I always thought that was interesting. I think it's important for kids to be able to make sense of the world. You want to be rewarded for things that, that are good and do good. And you want to be punished for things that are bad and create bad. I think it's obvious to everyone how wrong it can go when you give out punishment for no reason, right? When you're just like taking your anger out on someone. But I think what's not so obvious but also true is that things can also go wrong when you give praise for no reason. It's similarly detached. We're all trying to find like a working view of the world. So if you get feedback that's completely unattached to action or outcome or anything, it impairs your ability to function, I think. There's nothing to attach that praise to and so you can attach it to all sorts of other things like I'm better than other people or I'm special just by birth or something like that. So these teachers adoring him like that creeps me the hell out. It's true his powers are great, right? But I feel like they've forgotten themselves a little bit. It's a little bit different from what I'm saying because this actually is a talent, but it's a born talent. It would be like somebody praising someone for their height, right? It's like, what do you do with that information? Or people telling you you're good looking. I mean, it does feel good, but it feels good in sort of an artificial way. It's hard to get actual real meaning from that. It starts to feel empty. I think a common outcome of that of feeling like we can do no wrong or that we're on a pedestal or something like that is because we actually want to know the boundaries, we want to know our place and we want to know how to function best, we just start pushing, pushing the limits, pushing the envelope, pushing what we can get away with. And if you end up being able to get away with too much, instead of feeling free or liberated, you feel bitter. Because one way to internalize that is that you actually don't matter. Your actions don't matter. Or you're invisible, which is the opposite of what we actually want and need, especially as a young kid. While I'm at it, another thing that comes to mind about people like Bakugo, although not necessarily this character. People like that will often choose friends like Deku deliberately or friends that don't match them in areas that they themselves value because that's an easy way for them to feel more intelligent. People like that who are very prideful, they gravitate towards big fish in a small pond syndrome. They create the small pond for themselves so that they can always be the big fish. Yeah, you're right. I am amazing. Oh no, this is exactly I what I feared. No as great as I am. It's over for you, dude. I think they nailed it with him though. I feel like that's that's real. Yeah, it's called being quirkless. That's dumb. What is this? He's so lame. Poor Deku. Members of the agency, Baku, go sound off. Oh, and here's here's where Deku proves he's better than him on some level, at least. I didn't need your stupid help. Are you all right? Are you hurt? Oof. Me like I was some kind of weakling. Oh, this hurts me. So I get it. I feel like we got a skewed perspective on that. Was that a false memory? Because Deku said, like, I couldn't let you die. He, he wasn't dying in what we saw. He was, he was just sitting there. But maybe that was just his, his recollection. Still, it's so sad. Like, I totally get Bakugo and Deku. Bakugo was sort of set up for this. Not to absolve him of the meanness that's on him. Because now he's, you know, he's an adult or near an adult. So it's time to take responsibility, be responsible. But he's sort of on this trajectory that started as a kid. And he just hasn't had the chance to examine it yet. So hopefully that's what Deku will be. If it goes right, Deku will, like, blast that out of him or maybe All Might or the school or whatever, then he can actually connect that talent to better virtues, better values, and he'll be unstoppable. He'll be great. But I'm not! I'm so much better than you are! <laughs> Man, he's, he's just in too deep. He's so far in there. 
Bakugo definitely has a villainous side, and that's exactly what we need to succeed in this mission. I know how to beat Ida. Just ask him an opinion question. He'll keep himself busy. This trial and risk bringing shame down on the Ida family name. <laughs> means. I must now embrace evil to become a hero. He's so serious. Yeah, yeah. Raka, is that you? He's doing the voice. Well, respect for dedication. He really is playing the part. I feel like Ida doesn't do anything halfway. Right now he's monologuing. <laughs> he is monologuing. That's actually great villain, villainy. Kachan, I'm not scared of you anymore. <laughs> it's gonna make him even more angry. Everything Deku does is right, and so it's gonna make it worse and worse. These gauntlets aren't just for show. They've been storing up my sweat inside for one monster blast. Going too far. Young Bakugo, don't do it! You'll kill him! And this is where the irresponsibility comes into play. <laughs> but the truth is you're underestimating Deku. Or not. <laughs> Deku's dead. Who's paying for all this? <laughs> I can claim the weapon. That means we win. What does claiming mean exactly? I just have to touch the weapon Okay, that's pretty easy. If only I wasn't floating so slowly. <laughs> no! It's not over. I won't let Deku down. They're a good team. To employ such a strong attack indoors is inviting the destruction of the stronghold you should be protecting. The penalty would be a massive loss of points. I know that as a teacher, I should stop this fight now. <laughs> but you probably should. Just saying. But he's got all might intuition, so. an extreme amount of precision. He had to calculate the physics and demonstrate control over his quirk. Yeah, Bakugo is uber talented. Yeah, let's not forget, talent is something that he has in huge measure. Deku! Don't you ever forget what you are! You're a weakling! No, but the, the farther down this road he goes, the worse it's gonna be for him. I should end this. <laughs> Outgunned. Unless he's got some kind of plan, it's possible. I feel like this might be a huge thing socially, too. All their classmates watching them fight. Like, even if Bakugo wins this, which I don't think he will, he's won the battle but lost a bigger game, which is like life, social life, school life. I know that you're better than me. That's why I want to beat you because you're amazing. You're even more of an idiot than I realized. Uh oh. <laughs> this could be fatal. You're gonna hit him with Detroit Punch? We gotta kill each other. Yeah, Texas Smash maybe, but Detroit Punch? Come on, this is overkill. I can't beat you, not in a one-on-one -on -one fight like this, but I can win. So much for avoiding structure damage, but this will still end up being ten points for Gryffindor. Slowly floating. <laughs> well, he won. You've brought shame to your family. This is the only way I had any chance at winning. I really hope this brings them closer together. The hero team wins! Oh man, all sorts of feelings. They're all right. I mean, they're, they're kids. They would have no conflict if they didn't respect each other on some level. This episode helped me appreciate both of the characters more. So Deku first, I think this episode really drove home that he has a really good heart. Like he's actually a really sweet kid. It's not just that he's really ambitious or hardworking, which he certainly is. It's that he's kind, he's really kind. The way he gives respect to me shows a generosity. There's a kindness to even openly acknowledging other people's gifts. And he does that in abundance, in spades of Bakugo and others. I mean, his whole thing is like admiring people, right? like admiring heroes for their strength without realizing that he has very similar set of traits or maybe even better traits than a lot of them. For Bakugo, I was sort of throwing out just ideas about how people can become this way, but I think the show did a great job doing it in a way that feels real to me and in a way that's heart-wrenching. There's so much cognitive dissonance happening where there's like this image of the world and this view of, of myself and what goodness is versus my actual feelings and the fact that that 
way of looking at things doesn't really make me happy. It feels sort of hollow and empty. From that place, it's really easy to become bitter, I think. And I say all this partly from personal experience. I think some people have, have figured this out. But when I was a kid, I was in sort of a, a high profile position or like a position where I got a lot of attention and a lot of esteem from others, especially adults. I think my later childhood and my teens was largely a process of me getting rid of that and starting over as someone who didn't have a very high opinion of of myself, who felt the need to prove himself through actual useful endeavors. You know, that took a long time. It took a long time to undo that. And I think even without being in the position I was as a kid where I got a lot of attention, I think that's probably relatable to a lot of people anyway. You know, just being adored universally independent of, of action, right? Like not receiving proper feedback, not having correct structure. We talk a lot about freedom, but I think what's ideal is not freedom or structure, but a balance of the two, right? Like you wanna know where you are because structure gives you safety. It gives you a floor and walls and you need enough freedom that you can explore and grow and things like that. But it shouldn't be that everything you do is great and there are no consequences for your actions and you're always perfect. And likewise, it shouldn't be that you're always wrong, you're always terrible, or you know, you're set up to fail where every action is a transgression or, or whatever the opposite of that is. So Bakugo, I feel was sort of doomed at least initially. But I think that's part of growing up and being an adult. You know, we all have those things. We all have that baggage from childhood where we learn things that served us in the short term then, but no longer serve us or no longer are healthy or we're never fully correct in the first place. As a conscious adult, once you're aware of that, you get to go back and kind of remove those, those beliefs, go back to the beginning and build again. And so I'm not condoning Bakugo's behavior. Now he's pretty close to an adult. You know, he's basically an adult. So now would be the time. But, you know, sometimes it just takes something to show you that. And I think the moment at the end with Deku and Bakugo may have been the first crack in his armor. You just can't go down this road that long because it, it just is painful. Bakugo has set himself up to fail because Deku wins just by being good, but Deku is good. So it's the wrong game. And I think one way out of this situation where you're vying for, for power or status or whatever is when the other person disarms you by admitting defeat because then you get what you want and that softens the blow long enough for you to reflect on the whole situation. So Deku just collapsed and showed his weakness. And so that might have had the effect of neutralizing Bakugo's defenses enough where he can sort of step back and look at the fact that he almost just killed Deku or that Deku really admires him or loves him. There's all these, these good things there if you just looked at it. They don't have to be in competition. They can be allies. Pretty sure that's where this is going, thankfully, because I think that would be fun to see. This little mini arc was interesting. There's sort of a sadness to it, even though it's a lot of fun. It's still the fun show that I've come to enjoy over these first handful of episodes, but I feel a lot of sympathy for, for both of them, which is kind of cool. So yeah, that's it for episode seven. See you next time when we get the aftermath of this fight, which I hope is some Bakugo reflection, deep reflection. <laughs>